When it comes to the Mario universe, the most relatable enemies are by far the Shy Guys. And not just because of the name. Besides the fact that right now we both wear masks out in public, Shy Guys are reserved, yet known to be obnoxious. These foes are always seen fumbling around, and offbeat seems to be the tune of their lives. The original Paper Mario on N64 and Color Splash on Wii U are both very different games, but they certainly have one very positive thing in common. Their Shy Guy representation is phenomenal. Today I am going to be discussing both of these games' treatment of Shy Guys, in an effort to truly unmask which one does it best. To start, N64 Paper Mario has an entire chapter and world dedicated to the enemy. Shy Guy's Toy Box. However, essentially all of Color Splash centers around the character. They're the very reason Bowser is so effectively able to drain color all throughout Prism Island, sucking away paint by straw to supply his black paint bombs. While nothing can really surpass the Shy Guy's significance and plot here, the N64 version makes up for it by introducing all sorts of wild variants in different outfits and abilities. Groove Guys are jester-like foes that, according to Goombario, wear weird clothes and shake their booties to call in reinforcements. Sky Guys are master balloonists and, obviously, aerial attackers who happen to be skilled with a slingshot. As are Spy Guys, dressed in camouflage, harnessing a unique attack that can prohibit the use of one of Mario's battle options. Medi Guys are the emergency workers of the Shy Guy clan flying around and healing their allies in a heart emblem vehicle that looks a lot similar to Bowser's signature clown car. As a side note, Shy Guys actually driving Bowser's clown car is a gag used in both Super Mario RPG and, very recently, in the opening of the Origami King. Speaking of repurposed assets, there's also a few returning Shy Guys from Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo such as Spear Guys found in Jade Jungle, and on the opposite end of the Shy Guy spectrum, the fiercely blazoned Pyro Guys. It's easy to look at this trove of visual assortment and accept that by comparison, most Shy Guys are simply palette swaps in Color Splash. There's hardly any new types introduced, right? Well, I'd argue that that isn't actually the case. As revealed in the digital manual, Shy Guys wielding straws are technically variants themselves selected from only the most competent grunts and promoted to slurp guys. Those that are dunked in water for too long become these slightly creepy, color-smeared soggy guys. While slurp guys able to contort their bodies and inch around are known as the very creepy shunned guys, differing in that they're only able to be killed in battle by fire. It's a common trope seen with some more traditional monsters. Black shy guys, not to be confused with anti-guys, are ninjas. While taking over the Toad Captain's ship, this black shy guy introduces himself with a haiku about how blood, paint, will soon be spilled. They require an item or thing card to best, due to their mastery in evasion tactics, probably a result of their supposed black belt training. The most notable black shy guy, though, is one wearing a mask on top of his mask. It's the distinctive Shy Bandit, boasting his very own music track, amazingly accompanied by Shy Guy vocals. With a backstory of having apparently been banished from his homeland, the Shy Guy specially appears randomly on the overworld in an attempt to drain an entire area's color, even if the level has been fully restored. A calling card bearing his insignia marks the target, so if you can catch him in time, a victory in battle assures nothing will be lost. Shiny silver and gold Shy Guys, on the other hand, must be weakened with an iron-based attack, resulting in their foil layer satisfyingly peeling off in the same way stickers felt good to remove in the 3DS game. Speaking of sticker star, Sombrero Guy makes a strong comeback here, the guitar strummer who's able to power up his allies and heal them with musical prowess. This guy hangs around in the back of the line, well attuned in dodging most attacks, even ultra-powerful things. And he isn't the only performer in the game, as there are many specialized in various circus acts, ranging from a unicycling group to stacked trampolinists. From roller guys to wild animal trainers, 
quite a step up in my opinion from the stilt guys of the N64 game. That's about it for unique variants, but if you take a look at all of the non-distinctive, run-of-the-mill red rogue shy guys, there's still lots of memorable moments involving them. In Paper Mario, they're seen gallivanting around Toad Town, causing mayhem, or in a horde, hilariously shrieking a one-toned high pitch in unison. Perhaps they'll pop out of slot machines or circle around you indefinitely. Okay, that might be a glitch. In Color Splash, it's many of these standard mooks who are given plot significance and side stories of their own. One shy guy aspires to be a superhero, while another refuses peer pressure by not stacking with a group of his enemy type. These shy guys have turned to Ash from eating ultra spicy burgers, and Laundry Guy initiates battle when you ruin his spin cycle by taking the machine and his clothes with it. The best generic shy guy by far though is a mere passenger aboard the Sunset Express. He has Mario lend him his ear to reflect on the hardships of everyday life. This shy guy wishes for more, but has accepted that he's in Bowser's army for life. So he's given up on his dreams and tells Mario that they'll likely meet again, but unfortunately as enemies. This sequence is funny and surprising as is, but you can actually fight this same shy guy towards the end of the game. As he's defeated, but before vanishing, he'll explain that if he had to meet his end this way, he's glad it was by Mario's hand. By comparison, N64 Paper Mario doesn't have nearly as sentimental a Shy Guy moment, but there are many that serve story purpose. Gourmet Guy, for example, is hilarious. He crazily reacts to good cake, rocketing across the screen and probably momentarily ascending to a higher spiritual plane. It is a different story when it comes to bad cake, though. If the player messes up his dessert when controlling Princess Peach during a chapter interlude, He'll ask if she learned how to cook at truck driving school. Ruining the cake by adding 30 lumps of salt and some dish cleanser, he'll accuse Peach of trying to poison him. Despite the honestly justified insults, Gourmet Guy is a good guy that doesn't actually mind Mario. He passes along invaluable information for our protagonist's benefit. The Shy Guy Army's leader, General Guy, doesn't have a ton of dialogue, but he is the major boss of Chapter 4, and much can be discerned from his determined personality when confronted. The fight is notable in that he'll summon troops from his battalion to fight for him, while attacking himself from the safety of a highly fortified tank. My favorite quote is his first interaction with Mario, I don't care for you sir, you are rude, and furthermore, you're trespassing in here. Funnily enough, Anti-Guy, nicknamed Deadly Guy, is actually stronger than his commander, but maybe not in will as a little bribery with lemon candy can lure him away from the treasure he guards. Speaking of Anti-Guy, I love that this incredibly powerful enemy speaks and makes threats by incorporating hearts into his speech. This optional boss makes for an unforgettable part of the game and you can even fight three of them together later on, a whole anti-guy unit if this quiz in Bowser's castle is failed. With all things considered, there are some lesser moments left unmentioned, but this covers most of what you can expect in Shy Guy representation from these two games. Which do you think did it best? I'd say the exploration of their own home base, in conjunction with wacky visual varieties, work in favor of the N64 version. However, I'd argue for Color Splash that there's a greater focus on their separate personalities and roles in the story. Contrary to popular belief, the game does share its host of new types with visual flourish, too. Let me know what you think in the comments, but please keep it respectful so as to not turn this into a Because as you may or may not know, these games are part of two separate trilogies after all. Thank you for watching, everyone. Mamma mia!